Hello, YouTube folk. Welcome to a new episode of Rise of Flight from Delta the Dwarf. <laughs> Sorry, I just had the urge to talk into a cup there. I don't know why I think the music is making me doing it. Okay, today I'm going to give you an intro of the upcoming series Newport 28 Rise of Flight to Iron Newport. And I just wanted to show you and tell you different things and I will start with the airframes and go over to the information about the plane and then the historical facts about the American engagement in the war and let's hope it will be interesting because I found it interesting but I don't think everyone will like these airframes no one finds airframes interesting I do why because they are so different when you look right okay and to show you how different it looks I will show it to you in this nice little program, the MCF, no, no MFC viewer. And I don't really like this program because it's creating a lot of problems. Like sometimes this picture will disappear. Don't worry, it will reappear after a while. I can't do anything about it, but this is the best way to show you a plane frame, a plane frame compared to the others because it can load other models really fast. Okay, anyway, let's start talking about the new part. So, okay, the first thing that falls into the eye is this shape of the whole plane. Especially the body, it's very, very thin. And this tail that looks like an egg, maybe? I don't know. It looks different than any other thing. When you look at it from above, the tail is looking like any other British, American or something plane. I couldn't tell you from it. But where I can tell the difference is here. This upper earth wing section is perfectly round at the tips. And the lower wing section is as long as the upper wing section. And they are parallel to each other. Also the supports are parallel to each other. Which is a very, was a very, very new concept during that time. Then we have here two Wicker 7.7 .7 machine guns and yeah it's odd isn't it they are on the sides so the reason they are on the sides is because this is again a rotary engine this whole thing inside here is retreating the whole time like I told you with the subwiz and that's why it's creating a lot of torque in this direction so left wing turns you can counter the torque the whole time so they put some weights in form of the machine guns on the sides so you won't go into these weird left spins that kill the most subways pilots. Yeah, um, let me show it f to you from behind. Nothing really interesting there. And now I will show you his biggest opponent, the Fokker. I don't know if this is the right Fokker, but it's not really different. The Fokkers work very really alike. So. The difference should be really, really obvious. Mostly because of these heirlooms that are standing out here. And the whole body of the plane looks like a cubicle. Like not a perfect cubicle, but everything on here is flat. While everything else on the new port is round. I will show it to you, port to you later again. Um, the lower wing sections are shorter. Uh, this tail section is just massive. This massive tail section is the biggest difference uh, when it comes to behavior our behavior of the planes okay uh, let me show you the new port 28 again so you have this side to side comparison of this very very round body and also this this board behind here is to give the pilot a bit of coverage so when you get shot from behind you can duck behind it and a good chance that your head will survive the onslaught. Okay, compared to the new port, the other new port, the new port 11 to show you the difference more. This is the 17, and this is the 11, and this is where you can see the difference. Okay, the tail section is looking a bit alike, not of course the rudder, but the horizontal stabilization. And of course, this wing section here. This lower wing section is much smaller 
That's why it's called a uh, one and a half biplane because it relies on the upper wing section entirely and the other stuff is just for stabilization. Again, here, you can see this is almost as big as the upper part. Okay, um, let me show you the British counterpart, the SE5A. Uh, there you will, you can see the difference. Like this is an engine with wings compared to the Newport 28. It has kind of a round body, but when you look at it on the side, you can just spot the difference, especially in the tail part. But well, also, parallel supports, but this lower and upper wing sections are going everywhere. Just like our good old friend, the Sapos Camo. Sapos Camo. And where is it? The Newport 28. Huge difference. Just because this was going up to create more air drag at the tips of the plane. But they think they thought they didn't need it. This is a French plane by the way, but it was almost entirely flown by US Americans. Why is it is? I will tell you in a few minutes when I see you guys at the hangar. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I am changing the screen to the in-game screen. So I see you guys in the next screen. Actually, I won't be back in the hangar. I totally forgot about this plane for some reason. I'm really sorry. So this is the spot. The only reason the Americans weren't flying the spot the whole time was that they had problems with producing the engine for the thing. And so it took a lot longer until the Americans could start to use the spot because their French pilots were using it. So the difference between the Newport 28 and the spot is everything in here is parallel. Like when you look at the Newport, um, here. You can still see, um, like this is going, not going straight up, and you can't look through it. On the other hand, is a good old Spart 13C1. Yeah, you can look straight through it. It's a really, yeah, it's a really stable plane compared to the Newport because not everything's thin in here. It's just a massive bulk of engine power. Has these two Vickers machine guns again at top of it, just because this isn't a rotary engine. This is a GNOME engine. Oh yeah, this is a brutal plane. I'm really looking forward to flying it. This is also included in the free version of Rise of Flight, so if you don't own Rise of Flight, give it a try, because you can fly this beauty. Oh, it's little brother, I guess. I guess you can only fly this Bat 7, but there isn't really a difference and the flight behavior other than this has much more power. Just look at this tail section. This looks like a shark. This looks like a plane that is going to punch you in the face if you don't, if you aren't careful enough. Oh well, we aren't going to fly this one. No. We are going to fly the Newport 28C1. <laughs> Let's call it his little brother. Or his little American brother. Let's make it more American. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, I see you in the hangar. And hello and welcome to the hangar. So here it is. Our beauty, our love, our life. The Newport 28. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, we can do uh, different things here. Compass. Altimeter, clock, sides of indicator, cockpit light, all this good stuff, and two different sites. The Le Chirien and the other site. The other site is a British site, the Le Chirien is a French site, both collimator types. Um, I will use it in a campaign, but not right now, because it kind of hinders the site a bit. And you have two different machine guns. You got the regular guns and you got balloon guns. The difference between the regular guns and balloon guns is the balloon guns are shooting a bit slower, but they shoot incendiary ammunition, if I said this word correctly. 
to shoot down balloons. Easy as that. Okay, the rest is just scarves again, and a bit of history about the Newport 28. Not a very interesting one. And all of that good stuff I'm going to tell you during the flight. Like last time, I think that was uh, quite a good idea to do it this way. Okay, uh, let's unpause here. So, this is it. Newport 28. This is what it looks like when you look around in it. This is the bulk I was talking about. Let's hope my microphone didn't give out there. And I can duck under it. Not really in game, but well. <laughs> it will work if I want to let it work. Okay, this is the sights. We are looking through this nice little window here, which is uh, not really cool because it takes a lot of your vision. But I guess in reality it will also hinder you from oil splashing in your face and shards of metal coming through your brain <laughs> when you shoot at someone right in front of you. So this is looking this is how it looks at the side. And also I can still uh, lean a bit back around here. Normally the pilot will of course sit right next to here, but I enjoy vision. Talking about vision and enjoy. So this is the cockpit and this is the vision of my cockpit. So uh, right here we got our airspeed. In the middle we got our power. Oh, I really, really hope this microphone isn't giving out here because I have to move it a lot. Okay, this in the middle here is the power, uh, the RPM. This is the height. I really dislike this height size. Uh, height size. <laughs> I really dislike this this height measure instrument because it's really hard to see stuff. Uh, this is just an in-game problem. Then we got our ignition here and this is very interesting. You will see later why. We got our mixture and our watch and a banking indicator and my favorite, the blip switch. Rudder pedals, compass, everything in here is like you would expect except for the machine guns that are around here you can also use the sack of the machine guns by the way but um, I really prefer using the regular sights in here okay so this is a lamp by the way can I switch it on? no because it's day oh yeah and the oil this is the oil indicator if this is broken I have a problem behind it is of course the fuel Okay, so let's start the engine and see what is happening here. First off, let's turn on the mixture to 100% and start. Okay, so first off, in reality someone would run up there and pull the propeller down, then let it go. Let it rip. The pilot engages the ignition. Okay, and the engine is running. So. During the takeoff, I will pull up the audio fully. Not fully, because this will bl blow your ears off. But a lot more! And you pay attention to the sound it is making. Because it's a very interesting sound. It sounds like Angry Bee. And let's go.
So, okay, let's turn down the engine noise because this is one noisy engine. So, um, like I said, the interesting part lies in here. So, this is a rotary engine, and just like any other rotary engine, you don't really have a swap. You just have different states of how much cylinders are ignited when they fly past, past the magnetos. So, this is full speed. And I came down to three. I came down to two. Second. I need to catch my engine here. Okay, I came down to two. So the pilot switches between two and four the whole time to keep the engine running. And this is one. This is basically idle. And this is what happens when I'm pressing the flip switch. Again, this is like a clutch in a car. See how smooth it runs? I can shoot a lot of stuff while I'm doing this. The behavior of the airplane is really, really nice. And you can do almost anything with it and you won't get into a tumble. Which makes it very stable but also um, can't do crazy maneuvers like with the subways or with other planes. And you have to rely on reversals a bit. And if you have low airspeed like I do right now, um, it's a bit hard to roll around. Whoosh. Whoosh. Of course you have to manually mix the engine and just, just listen to the difference and look at the RPMs. And that was it. I will normally fly it around 10% when I'm this low. Oh yeah. It is indeed a really, really cool engine. And a really cool plane. So, okay, let's engage the autopilot here. So, I can tell you a bit of stuff about the Newport 28. So, Newport 28 was released in July 1917. It features the GNOME engine, 9N, and 160 horsepowers. Now, like I said, it was the counterpart to the French X stroke, 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 also known as the Spot 13. It was the first plane of the American Expeditionary Force, short AEF. Um, they have flown around 287 machines. The first Aero Squadron that received it was the 94th. This is the emblem of the Falcon 94. And yeah, like I said, it was really out of date when Americans start flying it, but well, they needed to wait for the Spot X8. It's also had always had a positive KD ratio. But you have to kill, uh, keep in mind that kill death ratios aren't really saying anything in combat during World War One, just because you never know how many planes were up against how many planes and who had some more experienced pilots. Uh, that's a lot more difficult to find out. Um, it is more agile than the Spat, uh, but the, in real life it had engine problems, like the engine cut out and just died. And the line coverage wasn't really well st stuck together. Like this line cloth all over the plane, over a wooden structure. And if you were going too fast, the line started to get loose at the wing sections and the outer wing sections. And of course, if this stuff is ripping off, you can fly anymore, which makes it problematic. An American pilot find it, found it out after a test flight, but he was able to land the machine and tell his friends about it. <laughs> Which well, I don't think was really helpful. Uh, which, which I think was really helpful for them, but not very helpful to, to morale. <laughs> I wouldn't want to sit in a plane that is doing weird stuff that you can't control. 
So, the best known aces are Quentin Roosevelt, which is the son of Cyril Roosevelt, and Eddie Rickenbacker. He had 26 kills. And Mr. Rickenbacker was a race driver before he has gone to France to start his career as a fighter pilot. I think it's really interesting and I guess we will meet Mr. Rickenbacher during our let's play and during our tour across the French lines. So it has his two wickers 7.10 like the Southwest Camel and like the Southwest Camel I, I really never feel like I am shooting a huge caliber at enemies but you will see the damage when it's done. The maximum speed of this thing is 190, uh, 198 kilometers an hour so it always flies about 200 and when you put it down a bit like here you can do it faster. In general most of the time the planes in game are flying faster than the counterpart. And uh, its service ceiling is around 5,300 meters. So you can fly really high with this thing and you should because it behaves like a dream when you are high above the enemy. Which is kind of unexpected. When you see how little and small and tiny this plane is. So yeah, like I said, um, this is an American plane and the Americans showed uh, rather late up in the war. And they did so under the command of Mr. Pershing, you might have heard about him. And the first um, really American squadron was way before the Americans engaged in the war. It was the Escadrille 124, this so-called Lafayette Escadrille, which consisted mostly of American pilots. They were just going over to France, did their pilot's license and start flying. Um, yeah. It was all, all of them were volunteers, not a single soldier or airman under them. Mostly because air warfare wasn't really a thing before World War I. People were uh, considering it just only to spot enemies. Like even Napoleon had balloons to see where his artillery shits, his shells were hitting, <laughs> shits, <laughs> where his artillery shells were hitting. But only in World War I. Um, real aerial warfare took off to shoot down these balloons and take pictures of the enemy trenches and yeah that's why pilots ran really the thing just came day later down the wall back to Lafayette so it was named after Marquis Lafayette which was an American hero during the American war with France I guess and the reason why so many Americans were going overseas to fight there was to get the civil... What's happening here? I can't go into first person mode anymore. I don't know why it is. And I can't control the camera either. That's interesting. What? I don't know what happened here. <laughs> I'm sorry the game bucked, I guess. Okay, so I will just show you this area a bit and tell you the rest of the stuff I found out. So the uh, Escadrille Lafayette was also called Escadrille American. Um, they had French uniforms and also a French officer named Raoul Louvberry, which had 16 kills and was also quite known. They were fighting over Verdun, which was the area with the most deaths in any area during the World War I fights. Yeah, and I guess that's all you need to know about the Newport 28. Considering how I can't fly the plane anymore, I will just end this video here and I see you guys doing the actual Let's Play. I'm really hyped for it because I really like flying the Newport 28 in multiplayer. And I guess it will be even more fun during the single player. Welcome back. I regained control of my camera. So now I just I just wanted to show you one more thing. And that is the turning rate. Because you have these air down there, it's behaving very differently to the other new parts. 
it's okay, let's see. I am fully turning the stick here. And this is what's happening then. You will switch around. This is so-called revert. Like if I am using the radar too much, I can do these really cool tricks here. And of course my favorite trick. Using the blip switch to go faster over. And use the snap roll. I need to more speed for the snap roll. Yeah, the snap roll is not as quick as with the camel, of course. Just because well, it's not a camel. But like I said, it's flying a lot more stable and it's a lot more fun to fly around with this thing. Because you don't have to fight your plane the whole time. Just because you want to do a faster turn. Uh, it's fighting machine guns or something. I think there is no car around here. Sometimes it's a game spawning cars in a very general direction. So let's just aim at this tree. And with the flip switch, it sets as far as like a green. Great plane, let's land it. Right on this field. Because landing is the only thing where I got a problem. Because I really don't like landing in rotary engines. Because it has weird behavior once you land it. Yeah, like it's pulling you around everywhere on the ground. And I did my known flip. <laughs> I don't know why this keeps happening. I'm, I'm just going too fast and I don't have the patience. So anyway, with this nice picture, I'm ending this intro. And I see you guys doing the campaign.